Hey everybody, today I'm going to review Rigid's brand new Gen 5X 18 volt brushless one gallon air compressor. This is completely cordless, it runs solely off battery packs, and it's designed with the woodworker, finished carpenter, or very light automotive uses in mind. So what I'm going to do in this video is give you some closer up looks at this. We're going to go over exactly how it operates, and I'm going to do runtime and performance testing, and you'll see firsthand the type of job that it's going to do for you. Here's a closer look at the compressor, and as you can see, it is extremely compact. The tank's on the bottom, the carrying handle's on the top, and the entire motor and pump assembly is inside this housing. Now overall, it's also very lightweight, coming in at under 20 pounds, and the dimensions will mean that you can carry it in the backseat of your car or carry it through a customer's house with no issues. It's less than 16 inches high, it's 12 inches wide, and with battery packs installed, it's also only 12 inches deep. In fact, when we compare that side by side with a standard stack compressor, you'll quickly see how small the Rigid really is. And although the larger version does have a bigger pump and motor, it also has a lot more storage capacity to fill up. With the Rigid's one gallon tank and brushless motor, the pump can recover that in under 30 seconds, and that's to the 120 PSI maximum. That's after you initially fill it up. So let's say you're using this and the pressure drops down. Once it hits a certain point, it's gonna automatically kick the compressor on, bump it back up to the 120 PSI, and then it's gonna automatically cut back off. There's nothing that you're gonna to have to do, and it's gonna to continue to do that until the battery packs are drained completely down. Other than the size and portability, the huge advantage of having a cordless compressor is the fact that you can use your existing air lines and your existing air nailers. Here we have two brad nailers and you can see the pneumatic version is a lot smaller and it's also a lot more lightweight because the cost of this plus the airlines plus the compressor still comes in at a lower price than just one cordless nailer and the fact that, that same compressor would power an entire range of nailers if you own those it does save you a lot of money especially if you're looking at having to buy multiple versions depending on what job you're working on on the rear of the unit, there are two battery ports, which both accept 18 volt rigid battery packs. Now, unlike other brands that would have two ports requiring you to install a battery pack in both of them, this is a true 18 volt tool and it will run only on one pack. What I'll do is install one now, turn the unit on, and you can see that it would fire up with no problem. If we had it in the opposite port, it would be exactly the same thing. And then if we had a battery pack in both ports, it means that we would have double the runtime. Rigid recommends that you use a minimum of a four amp hour high capacity pack for best performance. But I have a one and a half amp hour compact pack here. We're gonna plug that in and see if it's gonna power the compressor. Let's say you're in a bind and that's the only pack you had. If you flip the switch on, it will power it exactly the same way as the larger versions. On the front of the housing, you'll notice two different pressure gauges. The one on the left indicates your tank pressure. The one on the right indicates your outlet pressure or how much your line and your tool are pressurized at. To adjust this, they have a large knob in the middle that is locking. And to unlock it, all you have to do is pull out on it until you hear a click. At this point, you can rotate it left to right. If you turn it counterclockwise, it will lower the pressure in the outlet. You can set it at a specific amount, press it back in, it's locked in place, and now no more than 75 PSI would be coming out of it. But let's say we wanted 100 PSI, we would just unlock that, rotate it clockwise until the needle met 100, then we'll press it back in, and now it's set at 100 PSI. If you notice, the tank pressure did not change at all during this, and that means that the tank pressure will always be at maximum when the unit cuts off, but your outlet pressure is regulated and you control exactly what that pressure is by rotating this knob. Directly underneath of the pressure gauges and adjustment knob is the outlet that you'll plug your airline into. Now one tip I'll give you here is to lower the outlet pressure to zero, and that makes installing and removing this very quick and easy. If we notice with it pressurized, it does take a lot more effort to install it. And then when you remove it, all the air from the line is going to come directly out of the end and blow everywhere. To show you exactly what I mean by that, I'll go ahead and remove this. And you'll see that it does have a blast of air that comes out. But if we took our outlet pressure and we lowered that to zero, you'll see just how easy it is to plug in at this point. Because there's no air pressure at the outlet, it's easy to install. And if you lowered it before you remove it, you're going to see the exact same thing. 
When we remove it, it does not have any air pressure blowing back out of the line because as you reduce the pressure on the outlet, it also removes all the air pressure out of your line and your air tool. Directly next to the outlet, you'll notice a brass fitting that's known as a pressure relief valve. Now this is a safety mechanism found on all air compressors. And what it's designed to do is automatically open up and remove the air pressure from inside the tank in the case of the motor failing and not cutting off. This will prevent the tank from accidentally rupturing. And you can also use it to remove pressure from the tank if let's say you're traveling from one location to the next or you're storing this for the next time you use it. All you have to do is take the key ring and pull out on it and the air will automatically start rapidly evacuating. <laughs> to stop it, all you have to do is press the plunger back in. However, because this is known as an oilless compressor, you don't have to change any oil, but there is still minor maintenance needed. On the bottom of the tank, there's a ball valve, and what you'll want to do occasionally is open that up, remove the air, and it's also going to blow out a fine mist of water. As an air compressor runs, it compresses the air, and the water collects inside the tank, sitting in the bottom. Because this is a steel tank, water sitting in there would eventually cause rust and could cause premature failure. So every time you use this, it's a real good idea to open up that valve and remove all the air as well as all the water so you don't have any long-term issues with it. When you first get the compressor prior to actually using it, you do need to go through something called a break-in procedure. To do this, you'll install a minimum of two 4 amp hour packs that are fully charged, but you could also use the higher capacity 5 amp hour packs. You'll then flip the unit upside down, open up the ball valve, and then just turn it on. After the battery packs go completely down to zero and the unit cuts off because there's no more power left in them, you can then charge those packs back up, close the ball valve, and then it's going to be ready to go. This will typically take about 20 to 30 minutes and it's not going to damage the compressor, so definitely set it somewhere out of the way where the noise is not going to bother you. As with any air compressor, you'll also have to carry around an air line with you. And rather than carry this separately and have the hose unravel, they have a hose wrap built in the top of the unit, allowing you to carry the hose and the compressor at the same time. It's a rubber strap that pops in a keyway. You'll just pop that out, set your hose on top of the compressor, and then wrap the rubber strap over top of the hose. If you notice, the notches are going to slide right in that keyway. It's going to lock in place, and now you can carry everything very neatly and very organized. To test the decibel rating of the compressor while it's running from roughly four feet away, I have a handheld sound meter and you can see that it's fluctuating with the sound of my voice between 75 and 80 decibels. What we'll do now is just drain the tank down some, you'll watch it kick on, and then see how loud it actually is. Due to the air output as well as size of the tank, a smaller air tool such as this brad nailer is a lot more ideal because you'll get more shots off on this before the compressor kicks on than a much larger version. What we'll do is test this out in some standard pine boards and I'm firing one inch brad nails set at 70 psi. I have 50 feet of air line and we'll see how many shots we can fire prior to the compressor having to kick back on. With smaller guns like this pin nailer, even though the pins I have installed are longer than the brad nails, let's see how many shots we can fire with this before the compressor kicks on. However, if you're using a much larger air tool like this framing nailer, this particular compressor is not designed for it, simply because it doesn't have the massive amount of air output or storage capacity needed to operate this. And even with some fairly short nails installed, you'll see how quickly the compressor needs to kick back on. Now for a runtime test, I have two fully charged 5 amp hour packs. 
I have it set at 70 PSI of regulated pressure, and we're gonna see how many one inch brad nails we can fire into a Pine 2x6 before the batteries run out of power. One thousand three hundred and two one-inch brad nails before the batteries finally died. For light-duty automotive applications like filling up or topping off your tires, it's very easy to do along with this compressor, and you can do so on the side of the road or on a job site. Remember, if you have your trailer loaded down with a bunch of equipment or your tools, the tire goes flat and you don't have a way to replace it, it could leave you stranded, or worse, you could have to leave the trailer, and when you come back, all your tools could be missing. With this, it's very easy to air that tire back up, and because it runs completely off battery packs, you don't need to find a wall outlet in order to use it. For heavy-duty automotive applications, like changing a tire with an impact wrench, it's just not ideal because it doesn't have the overall tank capacity needed to operate something like this. Now I'll go ahead and remove some of these lug nuts and you'll see how many we can get through before the tank level drops down in pressure enough that it needs to kick back on. So a much better option than using an air impact wrench along with this compressor would be to just use a battery powered impact wrench. All you'll have to do is pop a battery off the back of the compressor pop that on your cordless impact wrench, and then using the exact same socket, we can remove the lug nuts and we don't have to wait for anything to air back up. So now you've seen Rigid's brand new Gen 5X 18 volt brushless one gallon air compressor for yourself. And remember that this will run exclusively on batteries. You can put one pack on there for small jobs, but if you want extreme run times, just add a second pack on and you can get a tremendous amount of work done before the battery packs die on you. It is covered with a three-year warranty right out of the box, and it's available exclusively at the Home Depot. Now, what I'd like to know is what do you think of this unit? Are you impressed with its overall features and performance? Leave a comment below this video and let me know what you think about it. In addition to that, I'd also like to know what air compressor you're currently using. Leave a comment with the make and model because I'd like to check that out also. If you like this video, please click like. If you like my channel, please click subscribe. And thanks for watching.